here. Been waiting for you. I thought Yang Yang said you had a super cool little buddy to show us. Where is it? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Did it just pop out of your tacit mark? Hmm. Smells good. So, is this how it first showed up when you guys were in the Norfolk Barrens? Yes. Back then, we... As I fought off those tacit discords, a burst of energy erupted from that statue. Two forces clashed and collided, and later, one of them emerged victorious, vanquishing the other in a violent clash. General Jian and Rover later told me it was this little thing coming out of Rover's body. It was blocking or even consuming the overflow of Thrinodian power. It reminded me of how Rover once absorbed frequency energy with her body in a similar fashion. So, we took her to the academy for a checkup with Baiju. Apparently, this little one is what we had detected before. It's a speculated space or organism hidden inside your body. Now we finally know. It shares similar frequencies with tacit discord's reverberations. It resembles an echo processed by the data bank stored inside your body instead of a terminal. In other words, it's your own echo, captured or absorbed at some point. Without you, it can't manifest. That's why Baiju couldn't confirm just how you absorbed that echo back then. Was it you? Was it the little one? Or maybe the two of you together? And Baija discovered more after analyzing your spectrums. She found a new power source within you. Similar to the Crownless, but even stronger. This power comes from the tacit discord you defeated in Norfolk Barrens. So, the excess energy this little thing had consumed somehow ended up in your body, available at your disposal. In other words, there is a deeper connection between the two of you. Or, according to Baiju, it's a convergent codependency. Uh, to put it simply, you are connected. While you are two separate individuals, your energies and vitals can affect each other. For better or for worse, you may even feel each other's emotions. The bond between you and this creature is symbiotic. As it strengthens, so do you. However, if one is harmed, the other suffers. Fortunately, since it can't ever leave your side, it's not an easy target for attackers. And if they do strike, it can seek shelter inside your body for safety. Okay, now that's pretty much it. Baija was going to explain it to you herself, but she has to go check on a newly appeared Sonora Sphere in Zhao Zhou. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, this is too much information for me to process. Let me get this straight. So, it helped Rover fight off the Thrinodian? Seriously? This teeny tiny thing could do that? <laughs> Seems unlikely. down on me. You'll regret it when you learn what I'm capable of. That poker-faced researcher was absolutely shocked when she examined me. <laughs> Said I'm not just any echo. I'm a super duper cool one. Rarest of them all. <laughs> No 
way Baija talks like that. She's more of a data dumb kind of person. Super duper cool? <laughs> nah, too extra for her. Seems like you're trying to boost your ego a bit. Oh, actually, while those aren't Baija's exact words, that is what she meant. She mentioned highly intelligent echoes that connect on their own in other countries. Said they are involved in every aspect of human life with unique abilities beyond our imagination. Those echoes are rare, though. Neither I nor Baiju, an eco-acoustics expert, have ever seen one in person. But this little thing here? It could be one of those foreign echoes. Yeah, makes sense. Now we just gotta figure out where it came from. Who knows? We may find other cool echoes in that place. Well, both General Jian and Baija have confirmed it. No way they're lying. I'll admit the thought of someone else having an echo inside them sounds pretty crazy to me. But with you, anything's possible. You can absorb reverberations with just your hands, like the legend says. So maybe one day you just stumbled upon this little thing and soaked it up like a sponge. Sounds feasible, I guess. So... Do you know where exactly she absorbed you? Huh? How am I supposed to know? Why don't you just ask her? Yeah, it happened before she lost all memories, so we have to ask you. But... Even if Echoes can have memories, they probably wouldn't remember things earlier than their first manifestation. I wonder if that's the case with this little one, too. Aha! Finally! Someone with common sense! That green-haired, serious guy asked me a similar question. Sorry to disappoint, but I really don't remember anything before I showed up. Hmm, maybe... Maybe... I was just sleeping inside her this whole time. So of course I don't remember. Sleeping? Seriously? It's been so long. All those happenings, all that fighting, and you didn't hear anything? Wow, that's... Your sleeping quality is really something. So you've got privacy to be respected. <laughs> don't worry. Your body sound insulation is amazing. You can dive into it, and everything goes quiet. The only problem is, I never know when I'll wake up again. And when I do wake up, I get tired and hungry fast. So I have to crawl back in for more rest. I know. It's all because I'm not eating enough. That's why you kept disappearing. You went back to sleep from lack of energy. Makes sense. Regular echoes need to be powered by the terminal, too. Hmm. I thought you'd be really different from the usual ones we see. Turns out you share a lot in common. So you probably don't know your denomination or a nickname. No wonder everyone's been calling you the little one. Denomination? What's that? The universally agreed terms for special echoes, like names for humans. They're named based on their characteristics, abilities, and places of origin. My denomination. It's. Mm, it's. Mm, I don't know. Do I not have a name at all? What? No way. No way. That's not fair. 
If all the special echoes have names, how can I not have one? I don't want to be called the little one all the time. It doesn't sound cool at all. How about this? You help me come up with a name, and I will let you have some of the food. Oh. <laughs> there is nothing left. Uh, next time. Next time, I'll definitely save some for you. Just, uh... Just give me a name. Please? A name? Now? Yes, I want it now. Look, your name's Chisha, your name's Yang Yang, and you... Uh, your name is... Heh, <laughs> that sounds interesting. Wait, didn't you forget everything? How do you still remember? With your old name and memories all gone, it's a good idea to go with a new one. It makes everything more convenient and represents a fresh start. Yeah! Exactly like she said! Every one of you has a name, and I want one for myself, too. I'm really not asking much. I just want a name that sounds a little cool, a little special, and epic, and super smoking. Names are a big deal, you know. Like once you have one, it's stuck with you for life. Gotta make sure it's a good one. Can't have people not scared of me when they hear it. No time for regrets here. That's true. Let's see. You want a cool one. What about Echo the Invincible? What do you say? Nah, nah, -uh. absolutely no. That's too straightforward. It's it's no better than calling me the little one. Hey, it makes every difference in the world. I am Echo the Invincible. That's what a hero play character would say as their transformation call. Or uh, or maybe since you can fly and you've got those long ears, why don't you call yourself a uh, righteous raptor or valor hawk? Oh, flying Fury? No. Absolutely no. Why do they all sound so ugh, cringy? Why? I love it when people call me the Jinjo Speedster. <laughs> Doesn't that sound awesome? Huh? <laughs> sure, if you say so. Anyway, they all sound like anything but my name. Absolutely no. Rover would come up with a good... Wait, why does it sound so random? You didn't just pick two random syllables, did you? So, is it because I've been saying absolutely no a lot? Uh... Uh, I meant to tease it as a joke, but I can tell it's upset now. On second thought, the name is indeed very important. Maybe I'll have to come up with a different one. Uh, 
be Abra Braxis? What's wrong? What are you muttering about? Abra what? Sounds like you're reading a spell. Uh I don't know, but I just have this feeling that this is what my name should be. Okay, ready? Abby. I like the sound of that. <laughs> That's my name. Of course I like it. You came up with it for me. I was just trying to get used to it. That's all. Besides, I feel attached to this name now. <laughs> My name is Abby. You will not call me the little one again. Sure, we won't. Got it. Well, that didn't work out. I was hoping we could get some answers from the little... I mean, from Abby. But now we're back at square one. I really thought we could figure out where Abby came from. It might not lead us to other special echoes, but it's at least a starting point to uncover Rover's past. Then we'll have something to do before asking Madam Magistrate and our Sentinel about it again. Maybe we can start with Abby's special abilities instead. Each special echo has a unique ability. We can compare what Abby does with our records of other Echoes to see where they came from. Besides, it was Abby's power that helped Rover defeat the Thranodian, I suppose. Why do you sound so unsure? Didn't you see it all with your own eyes? Abby, can you show us again? I'm super curious how you did that. Who knows? We might learn something. Well, since you asked, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> but this place is too crowded. Let's move to that open spot over there. Him, all eyes on me. <laughs> well, what's going on? I'll try again, just you see. happen? Uh, just, just a little slip. That's all. I can do it. You gotta trust me. Back then, I just stood in front of her, and that big Bathronodian monster thing just, uh, it just left. So, you didn't really do anything? Huh? No, I, I definitely did something. Like I said, I was asleep, and then all of a sudden, I smelled something really yummy, coming closer and closer. Ah, uh, it was like nothing I ever smelled before. I didn't have time to think, I just had to show up and reach out for it. So, maybe Abby's power activates automatically under certain circumstances. Perhaps Abby can't control it yet. Yeah, it looks that way. You can't even hold your shape for very long yet. Hey, hey, hey! Stop looking down on me! Like I said, it was just a little slip. Really. But I think about it. I just stood there and did nothing and ended up beating a Thranodian. Imagine what I could do if I actually tried. 
Hey, Rover, get behind me next time we run into anything, okay? I'll keep you safe. Promise. You're so real for that, Abby. You bet. I said I'm super strong. I'll protect her. That's very reassuring to hear, but it seems we're stuck again. I can't think of anything else to check out. Where did you absorb Abby? What are Abby's powers? And what exactly happened between you two? There are so many questions we can't figure out yet. Our sentinel, Joy, can look into the future. Nothing ever deviates from its predictions. It has already sort of guided you to the Norfolk Barons through Madame Magistrate's messages, right? Now that the Thranodian crisis is over, perhaps you can consult our Magistrate and our Sentinel again. I'm sure they can offer you some more useful guidance. Relax, relax. You have me now, remember? Meeting up with that Jinshi person, getting your memories back. I've got you. Speaking of that, so this Sentinel can predict the future? That sounds cool. The name Jue sounds pretty cool too. It's almost as cool as mine. What does it look like? Where is it? Since we're paying it a visit, this sentinel should treat us with food, right? Mmm. I wonder how the food's gonna taste. Our sentinel protects every one of us. Of course it's cool. But why are you talking about food again? Didn't you just stuff your face? What, is your stomach a black hole? I can't help it. I'm always starving. Rover, did you hear that? My stomach is growling. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, how about we go to that place we went to last time with Yang Yang and Chisha? I love their food so much. food right in front of you. Aren't you gonna try any? Well, if you're not interested, I'll gobble it all up. <laughs> <gasps> You've been absent-minded the whole day. Still bothered by that dream from last night? Wait, so you had a dream about the Sentinel? Like the one from your flashback when we saw the sentinel statue after you lost your memory? <laughs> Hang on, so let me get this straight. The sentinel swooshed you off to a mountain shaped like a dragon. And then there were all these bad things going on with lots and lots of tacit discords. But the Sentinel saved the day. How exactly did it protect everyone again? Oh, in your dream, it made the time different there. Yeah, 
The time in the mountains seemed to have slowed down from the outside, away from the tacit discords. The Sentinel must have created a barrier by manipulating the flow of time, keeping those monsters out. It was a safe haven from all the disturbances caused by the tacit discords, where people lived peacefully. Also, in my dream, I wasn't affected by the slowed time and could freely move in and out of the barrier. It's no shock that you have awesome powers, being friends with me. Uh, what was that place you dreamed about called? I'm not entirely sure I heard it correctly, but in my dream, the Sentinel mentioned a place called Mount Firmament. Mount Firmament? Never heard of it. You've never heard of Mount Firmament? Then I'm sure you're not from around here. Huh? Hold on! Did you just say Mount Firmament? Oh my! Did that Echo just talk? Come on, man, relax. You don't hear an Echo talking every day, but it's not that uncommon either. I heard there's a country called Re... Uh, Rhinus. What? Anyway, the Echoes there are next level. Oh, you're not from around here? <laughs> well, that explains why you don't know about Mount Firmament. Legends say Mount Firmament is where the first people of Jinjo live. It looks like a giant statue of our sentinel, Jue. I've never actually heard of anyone going to that place. They say those who try either get lost in the sea mist or never come back. If you're curious, just head southeast. Mount Firmament is on the east side of Whining Ix's Mire, and you can see it from a distance. The South East. The past few days, especially this morning, I caught this unique smell from the Southeast, from that mountain they just mentioned. like a strong energy pulsing through the air, but I can't quite put my finger on it. It feels kind of weird, though. Doesn't smell natural. Could it have anything to do with what you said? A place where time passes slowly? Hmm. Do you want to go check it out? I had a flashback about seeing their sentinel. Perhaps that happened on Mount Firmament. I can feel an unknown force guiding me, urging me to go there and find something. Jinsi said she'll go search for the Sentinel and update me on its whereabouts. But so far, I have not heard anything from the City Hall yet. Then shall we go check it out together? It feels really suspicious. Abby, are you getting sleepy again? Let me uh, take a quick nap, all right? I've got keen ears. If anything goes down, just give me a holler and I'll, I'll be... I'll be up in a jiffy, I swear.
Greetings, Rover. What can I help you with today? I regret to inform you that Madam Magistrate is not in the City Hall. She has left for Mount Firmament. In fact, we have not heard back from her for days. Unfortunately, no. Please keep this confidential. The situation in Jinzhou is still unstable after our battle with the Thrinodian. We must limit discussion of the Magistrate's whereabouts to a select few. When we captured Scar, he claimed that the Praxidus had imprisoned our Sentinel. It was around the same time that Madame Magistrate lost track of Sentinel Jue. If our Sentinel is truly in danger, or if someone with malicious intent obtains this information, the potential consequences could be as catastrophic as the previous Thranodian invasion. In order to investigate the Sentinel's whereabouts, Madame Magistrate has left for Mount Firmament, its last recorded location. Madame Magistrate traveled to Mount Firmament alone. The looming threat of the Thranodian discouraged any additional diversion of human resources. Furthermore, when it comes to the Sentinel, force is not a viable solution. Madam Magistrate trusts you. It is beyond my authorization to meddle in your decisions. However, the landscape around Mount Firmament is complex. One must be accompanied by a special wayfinder to navigate safely. That's all I know. Currently, she's likely at the ferry terminal in Whining Ix's mire. I'll reach out to her. To learn more about Mount Firmament, you can meet her at the ferry. I lack the same level of understanding of the situation there as she does. I trust Madam Magistrate's decisions. I will do my utmost to handle the public matters on her behalf while she is away. I just... This worry about her safety won't leave me. In her last video message, I could tell she seemed weaker than usual, despite her efforts to maintain composure. Madam Magistrate's situation might not be optimistic. Rover, Mount Firmament is a dangerous place. Please take care. I have sent the coordinates to your terminal. Thank you for your kind help. I pray you will both return safely. listening hey did you notice how the mountain has a strangely pleasant smell hmm it doesn't look edible though not that I'm hungry or anything I just tend to doze off easily feels like my body can only process what I consume while sleeping and don't worry, if there's any danger coming your way, I'll wake up like clockwork, just like last time. Well, unless there's nothing that can even remotely challenge you. In that case, I probably won't wake up. Let's head to the ferry. Hmm. Mount Firmament. Our Wayfinder should have plenty of information to share.
Ben öyle 